Hello, everybody. Thank you, Puff, for, for, for the invitation, for the hospitality, for fitting the weather as well. It's been great. Sverker and Matthias, so you're, you're very nice guys. <laughs> so, since I have to give you uh, some, an overview of the responsible gaming uh, as seen uh, from a regu regulatory perspective, first let me show you what gambling is in Italy, very quickly. I have just 18 slides, but I will be quick, so Gustav, uh, shoot me if needed, if I get too long. So we are the regulator. It's it, it, it used to be called AMS, Autonomous uh, uh, Monopolies uh, Administration. And uh, we are in charge of regulating uh, all the gambling uh, sector in Italy, land-based and online, as well as the tobacco sector, two vices. In uh, uh, 2012, we merged into the uh, Italian Customs Agency. Uh, we never understood why. It's been a move uh, to, to, to save some money for the state. So we are a very larger organization now. We do customs, something I don't know anything about. And we do the monopolies, gambling and, uh, uh, and tobacco. We have uh, 2,700 people working uh, uh, scattered across Italy, whose task is to, uh, mainly to do inspection, inspect inspections on uh, land-based uh, gambling. So let's take a look uh, to, at the market. The, the online gambling market, because um, online is my field. And uh, the first thing I want to show you is that uh, the market is not growing at all. It's a cliche, maybe, that online gambling is eating uh, the land-based one. It's not happening in Italy, at least. What's changing is just the mix of the demand of players. As you can see, the demand is quickly shifting towards games, whereas uh, a faster feedback with higher payouts and, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and a very quick uh, uh, rhythm when you can see if you are winning or not. Uh, that will be represented by the casino games and the uh, embedding for, uh, by the success of uh, in-play or live betting. That's the trend of uh, uh, tax revenues for the state. In this case, they're even declining. So, uh, and even this uh, is uh, counterintuitive. If we put it in the, in the wider context of, of, of gambling in Italy, land-based and online, you can see that online represents just the four point something percent of gambling in Italy. In terms of tax revenues, it's just 2.3 percent. So the lesson, it's uh, less than 200 million euros per year for the state. So uh, the lesson is that regulation of online gambling is not tax driven because you get that much tax money and uh, it's, uh, it's not a way to sort out the, the, the budget issues for a state. It's not by regulating online that you uh, uh, make a state rich. Where's the money then? This is, uh, again, the, the combined uh, uh, land-based and, and uh, online. 80, almost 90% of the money in Italy, at least, but I think it's similar elsewhere, is spent on uh, retail slots and lotteries. The pure online games, poker and casino, are just, uh, uh, account for just 2.5%. Who's the player? So th these are the, the, the actual figures. Uh, there are every month around 640,000 active players. The figure is declining again, even in, in this case. It's uh, really a male staff, because 83% uh, 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 of the players are male. The, the figure for, for women is increasing th this year after the regulation of online slots. It's a game that attracts some women. And finally, that's the age. It's, yeah, it doesn't show up, but uh, you, we have uh, the, the, the 18, 25 here, and uh, uh, 25, uh, 35, and so on. So what, what impresses me is that uh, the average age of a player 
of players is uh, increasing over time. Players are getting older. So I can't help but wonder what the younger players are doing. Maybe they are doing something else or playing something else. In Italy, we have this thing. I think that's pretty unique because it's uh, really uh, complicated uh, to, to comply with uh, for operators of, uh, of uh, monitoring every single gambling transactions. And we monitor uh, all of that as in association with, with the, the, the player personal data. So we have an enormous amount of data that could be really useful, for instance, uh, to, to, analyze, to be analyzed uh, to, to, to see possible behaviors of players. But unfortunately, we don't have the skills to do that, at least at the moment. Over time, we, we regulated all the uh, games, online games that uh, are available on the market. It's been a very long process. And in, in back in 2009, uh, we reformed uh, the, 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 the online gambling sector, where uh, we, uh, we, we, we had a focus also on, uh, for the first time in our uh, regulation on, uh, on responsible gambling measures. We improved uh, the transparency for, uh, to players by imposing uh, very clearly uh, th that uh, the, the payouts, for instance, or, or the, the, the responsible gambling tools were, had to be really visible on the operator's websites. And also, uh, we, we are tracking now the, the, the personal data of, of players. We didn't have any best practices to look at uh, at that time, so it's been a trial and error process. After that, we got fully EU compliance. A few words about the, 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 the fight against the legal operators, because uh, if there is a strong uh, illegal market in a country, you can impose uh, as many uh, responsible, measure, uh, responsible gambling measures uh, as you wish, but they would be absolutely uh, useless if people are, are playing uh, uh, offshore. So, back to, to responsible gambling. The, 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 mm, the lar large part of the, work in this, of the work in this field has been uh, uh, done by the European Commission very recently. In 2012, uh, they issued uh, an action plan with their intentions, uh, uh, listing their intentions uh, of uh, uh, doing something uh, in this field. And there were five uh, topics, five uh, uh, main objectives. Just one of that, of those, was about uh, responsible gambling. That's uh, taken uh, by the, the official statement of the Commission, protecting consumers, minors, and vulnerable groups. They established an expert group, I have some colleagues here who will attend that, to, to discuss those and to achieve what, the, uh, what happened uh, uh, next, uh, a recommendation. A recommendation uh, to member states where the European Commission suggests in, uh, to them what initiatives must be uh, uh, taken uh, to, 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 to address uh, the, the, the topics I mentioned before. Uh, what's interesting here, that out of those five topics uh, uh, here, these ones are the, the four, seven objectives of the recommendation. Only these ones. And if you see, they are all about responsible gambling. So uh, it's, uh, I won't read them all, because, but uh, you can read by yourself. Af so after a two year work, uh, that, that's what uh, the European Commission is recommending to, to member states. And it's something that unfortunately is not binding because there's no consensus uh, at the European level about uh, uh, common initiatives. So it's just, again, a non-binding recommendation. So we regulators, how do we uh, improve uh, our uh, uh, framework uh, so to be more effective when it comes uh, to responsible gambling measures? There are three ways. First one is cooperating with other regulators you know, on a, on a, in a bilateral way. We started with, fr with France, we signed an agreement in 2011, and one of the objectives of, the, of those administrative agreements is uh, to, to find measures to prevent problem gambling. Or 
we rely with the uh, uh, we rely uh, on the uh, work that the European Commission is doing, and uh, uh, I just want to highlight uh, what 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 are the characteristics characteristics of the two uh, cooperation models: the bilateral thing and the multilateral thing. When we cooperate with a single regulator, we exchange. Uh, best practices with countries that share a, a, a similar regulatory model as ours. So we are very similar, so we, we, we can exchange really practical things, uh, really uh, um, practices on, on something that happens every day in our uh, work as regulators. Uh, unfortunately, the exchange uh, happens only wi with another country. While the, the work that the Commission, the European Commission, is doing uh, involves all 31 countries across Europe. Of course, we are all different, so discussion, the discussion is a bit more complicated. But uh, at least uh, we have uh, a way to find uh, the best practices because uh, the, the, the benchmark happens on a, very, on a much larger scale. So while the regulatory cooperation works better in the short run because we solve uh, uh, daily issues, the, the <coughs> EC work is something that, uh, that will work on the medium or long run. It will be a higher impact uh, on our uh, respective frameworks. But both of these uh, uh, activities are essentially are targeted to achieve uh, high level consumer protection. That's a key uh, objective of the European Commission. That should be a key objective uh, of every regulator. And that uh, uh, demonstrates that finally, uh, after mere 18 years since uh, online gambling has started uh, in this world, we are finally trying to tackle uh, this matter. And maybe it was about time. Thanks a lot. <laughs>